Someone say praise Lord this morning. Hallelujah. It's awesome to be in the house of God and it's great to know that Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive this morning. And I'm grateful that he is alive and yet in the land of living, sitting on the right hand of God. And one of these days, and uh, as Jim was uh, singing, we're going to be meeting in the air with him. He's going to come back with those dead in Christ, and we're all going to go back with them one of these days. But that great trump of sound, when it comes, we're all going to be ready. Who's ready to go home? Come on, who's ready to go home this morning? I praise God that I'm ready and whenever he calls, when he calls me, I'm going to answer him. Praise the Lord. Thankful this morning for you all being in the house of God. I, I thank for this message this morning. It's wonderful to know that the Lord knows what to give his people. And he knows what to say to his people. He knows what to, he knows what people need. He knows what I need. And it's not what I do, it's what his will is. It's not my will, but his will be done. And when he tells me to preach something, I'm going to preach it because if I don't preach what I know that he wants me to preach, then it's not going to go over well. It's not going to bless the way he wants it. It's not going to bless the way I want it. Whether it's to preach to something about sin or blessings or whatever, his will is going to be done. And he gave me this scripture in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to be going off this theme today, failing to remember the Lord's blessings. Failing to remember the Lord's blessings. And if you're looking at this on the internet, we go not out in these four walls, just in these four walls, but we're outside of these four walls here. I want people outside of these four walls around the world to hear the voice of Jesus. I'm just one little voice out of many in this whole world, but he wants us to send the message of Jesus to the ends of the world. And I'm glad if you're watching this on the internet, on mygladtidings.org, that you are listening to this today, and I hope you get inspired by the Word of God. Failing to remember the Lord's blessings. We're going to be in Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, and we're going to read those today. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, and forget, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Dear God, we honor you and thank you for this time and for this message we're going to give today. This is the, your bread, your daily bread today. Thank you, Father. Give me strength and anoint these lips, Lord, of clay that I preach in the way you want me to. Every word comes from you, Father. I don't preach in my strength, that I preach in yours. And I pray for those who are in this house today and those who may be watching that they be inspired by this word. And I thank you, Father, for this daily bread that you've given me to give to your people in your precious name. Amen? Amen. Failing to remember the Lord's blessings. Let me read those verses again. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, Psalms, Psalms 103 is a chapter that David wrote to praise the Lord for his mercies toward him. Now, this psalm is also a, a psalm of of the Lord's forgiveness. Again, this is a psalm of the Lord's forgiveness. 
See, as people saved by grace, you know, we have a problem that affects every single one of us this morning. And our problem is this. We are forgetful. Oh, we can remember all kinds of things, especially, especially what others have done to us or have said about us. We tend to forget about those awesome, soul-changing things that the Lord has done for our lives. We, all for, also, we forget about those, but we don't forget about those hurts. Now, I'm not saying that all Christians who are saved by grace has a short memory, but some take for granted after a while what he has done for us. See, we have a long memory when it comes to our hurts, our sorrows, and our burdens, but a very short memory when it comes to recalling just how good the Lord has been to us. See, David also had this problem. He had this problem. See, in these two short verses, these two first verses here, David calls upon his soul to remember what the Lord has done for him. See, he wants, us, he wants to stir up the inner man, his soul, and get it excited, get him excited about what he has in God and what the Lord has promised to do for him. You know, there's a lot of promises the Lord has promised to do for us, and he's going to do them. And do for him and in him. David calls upon his soul to do two things here. First, he calls his soul to praise the Lord. In his, this form of the word praise, he uses the word bless, which means to kneel in the ideal of adoration and praise. David knows that God is worthy of all the praise we can bestow and provide him. And David wants his soul to be involved in praising the Lord, not just him. He wants his soul to be involved in praising the Lord. Secondly, he calls his soul to ponder or think about the Lord. He challenges his soul not to forget what the Lord has done for it. Now, I want you to note something here. All the personal pronouns in verses 3 to 5, you and your, those pronouns all refer to the soul. Now, by the way, forgetting is far more than just failing to remember something. This word carries the idea of turning from God to follow other gods. Talking about a gap or a lapse or the, or the momentary failure of spiritual memory will cause the saints to wonder or cause them to stray. See, David wants his soul to reflect on all the benefits which the Lord has given. The word benefits means dealing. To forget not all his assistance in our lives. To forget not all the helps in our lives. To forget not all the advantages he has granted us. It refers how the Lord treats or deals with the soul. Now, I find it noteworthy of this here, that the root word for benefits is also the root word for camel. Camel. Isn't that interesting? For people living in the Middle East, the name, the, the name camel, the camel, the camel's importance cannot be overstated. As we know, it, the camel is called the ship of the desert. Then, you know why? Because they carry great weights and burdens over a long distance through harsh terrain and desert land. They can survive for a long period of time with little food or water. They're essential to travelers who wish to cross the burning sands of the deserts and arrive safely at their desired destination. In fact, the Bible, the Bible, uh, Bible tells us here, and at times, it makes it, it makes it known that a man's wealth is often measured by how many camels he owns. Mm -hmm. Like camels, the benefits of God are able to transport the saints across this vast barren desert of life to our home in glory. Mm -hmm. The man who enjoys the blessings of God is rich beyond measure. Though he may possess little in the world, he still has a treasure of God and his benefits. 
Sometimes the soul forgets. We, you know, we forget just how God has been, has been good to us and how he's continued to be, how we are continuing to be his children. He allows us. He is so long-suffering enough for us to be his children. It's an honor to be a child of God. How many know that today? It is not true that we, is it not true that, the, that we allow ourselves to get caught up in the problems and troubles of life? And I mean so much that we forget where the Lord found us and what he did for us and where he is going to take us. Aren't we guilty of uh, allowing our eyes to lose concentration of the Lord, from the Lord? Aren't we guilty of allowing our focus to be man-centered instead of God-centered? For too often we are guilty of forgetting what God has done for us, especially when he made us into new creatures. One day he came into our lives and we were sin and sin and shame and he came in and made us new. Sometimes we forget about that. You see, the world around us is a, it's in a constant state of change. You know why? Because we're at war today. The world's at war with itself. The economy is in a constant bad shape as well. I don't care who says that we're in a good co- economy. We'll, we'll never have a perfect economy. People are having problems with their health, their homes, and their finances. Even the church is not resistant or immune or invulnerable from problems as people come and go. But I want to remind you of something this morning. I want to remind you of this, that while the world is changing, while the church is changing, while your life is changing, the benefits of the Lord, which I'm speaking about today, never changes. Why? 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 Because the Lord never changes. Hebrews 13 13 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. See, sometimes our, our soul forgets just how good God is and what he's done for us. I want you to think about that. Sometimes we need the reminder of the benefits and I enjoy, uh, that we enjoy as children of God. Today, as Lord gives me freedom and permission, I want to stress this point about failing to remember the Lord's blessings. And if you allow the soul to forget the things God has done for you, then this message is designed to speak to your heart today. If you're guilty of allowing the burdens of life and the actions of others to influence your walk with the Lord, God has a word for you too. If you have never trusted Jesus as your Savior and you know that you need him as your Savior in your life today, you will hear how you can do that today. You see... These blessings and benefits I'm going to talk about today are for everyone who will come to him by faith. Let me share this with you about failing to remember the Lord's blessings. Verse 3. See, as a sinner, he forgives us. Verse 3 says again, Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases. Man's greatest need makes the top of David's list. David uses the word iniquities. This word means evil, wickedness, or crookedness. It refers to that evil that is fixed in our nature that pulls us towards sin. It brings to mind the fact that I am a sinner, I have sinned, but it also points out the fact that I am guilty of sin now and ever will be as long as I'm in this body. Yet, let me tell you this, yet he forgives all, forgives all the iniquities of the soul. That is, he takes our sins and puts them away from him forever. He did this through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on Calvary. Now all our sins, past, present, and future, have been forever put away through the gift of God in Christ Jesus. I want you to know something here. 
Please notice that this word, along with all five, all five of the verbs in these three verses, signifies the present tense, presently. Not only has he cleansed or washed me in the past, he continually cleanses me in the present. And he will continue to cleanse me in the future until the day when my sin nature will forever be left behind and will stand perfected. Someone say perfected. We will be perfected in his glory. Now, now does this mean that we are sinless? Of course not. We sin, the, the accuser of your brethren, in Reverend, uh, Revelation 12 and 10 says, the devil stands before the Lord and points out our sins. And when he does this, the saints have a man on the inside. Oh, y'all better get that. We have a man on the inside. When the accuser points the finger at us, our advocate simply holds out his nail-pierced hands and says, we do not know what sins you are talking about. That person's a child of God, and they are righteous through the blood of the Lamb. All their sins are forgiven and all are forgotten. All Jesus has to do is just show his hands. <laughs> See, as a sinner, he forgives me. How could my soul forget that? How can we forget that? How could I be so foolish as to become distracted from his glory by the routine and minor events of life? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And as a sick man, he heals us. You know, the, the, these bodies we wear are often afflicted with sickness and disease. But this verse is not just referring to physical healing. It's not, all, it, it's not always God who will heal his people too. He won't heal us from the physical afflictions either, regardless of what some preachers say. But you know, he's also referring to the sickness of the soul. See, our souls are subject to many terrible difficulties and struggles. Among them are lust, hate, greed, Jealousy, discouragement, I can think of depression, anger, we, we, we're fear, fearful, guilty, we're guilt and doubt. There's a lot of other things. And this is just to name a few. And just as surely as diseases of the body can take away physical life, the diseases of the souls can deaden or reduce us toward the things of God and leave us lifeless and can leave us weak. But I want to thank God for something. Thank God he has a remedy for the diseases of our soul. This word is also in the present tense also. Each day, the divine physician, what he does, here's what he does. He visits his patients through his grace. He tenderly and effectively heals all the diseases of our souls. And of course, the effect of this healing, must we must take our medicine in this. Let me tell you about Psalms 107, 17 through 21. Let me read that for you. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men will give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. How could the soul ever forget the tender touch of the great physician? As time and time again, he has diagnosed and he's treated and he's healed the diseases of the soul. And when I think of the help and healing I've received, what can I say but bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Come on, someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. I feel his hand on me right now. Hallelujah. Verse 4, I, oh my God. 
Verse 4 says, hmm. Ooh, here's what he does also. He says, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Let me tell you something. As a slave of sin, he redeems us. Every soul that enters this world is a slave of sin. And every soul is headed to a horrible con conclusion as well. You know, Romans 6 and 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So when I think about that, I can thank God that he, that he saw the predicament of our lost souls and provided redemption for them. Oh, come on, someone say hallelujah, please. He saw our enslavement, and he saw the ultimate destiny in hell that, he, that awaited every single member of the human race, but he wasn't merely content to see that. He did something about it. He came into the world and paid the price for redemption on the cross. Mm. Yes, he did. First Peter 1 Peter 1.18.19 says, Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a, of a lamb without blemish and without spot. <laughs> now, now those who were slaves to sin and headed for an eternity of hell have been delivered from slavery and have a heavenly hope in Jesus Christ today. Oh, praise God. And I would like to point out the word is redeems, redeems, redeems. It, it's, it's with the letter S at the end of it. This is also present tense, the redemption enjoyed by the children of God will never falter or never fail until all the saints arrive safely home in glory. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. John 10, 28 says, and I gave them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Right. Ooh, I can shout on that, folks. <laughs> I, 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 I'm in the hand of God, folks. When I think of the fact that I was once a slave to sin, but now I'm free from sin's bondage, sin's curse, and sin's penalty, I just have to say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, my God. You see, see, every one of us would have wasted away the life of our soul, but seeking things that could never satisfy us, but only... Hmm, I want to say this right there. Oh, this is for someone here right now. You know, we could have wasted away the life of our soul by seeking things. Someone may be watching, need to hear this today. Thank you, Lord. Seeking things that can only lead to destruction. But, you know, we can thank God. As a songwriter said in one of my favorite songs, thank you, Lord. I used to sing this song in praise and worship. He says, when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me, to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and he turned me around and he set my feet on solid ground. And then the verse says, it makes me want to shout. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Oh, come on, someone lift your hands with me. Praise God that he saved you. Lord, we honor you and thank you.
If you're watching today, lift your hands today and praise God this morning. God, we thank you for lifting us up and praising us and, and lifting us and putting us our feet on solid ground. Who? Whose feet on solid ground today? Who? Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Who? And he made all the difference in our lives. How could my soul forget such a blessing? You know, you know oh, it does from time to time it forgets, but when it, but when it remembers, remembers the problems of life fade into ins insignificant again, and God becomes glorious again forever. Hallelujah. And then he says, he, children of God, he crowns us. Let me read verse 4 again. He says, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. David says that like a king passing down the power of glory of the kingdom to a beloved son, the people of God are crowned with blessings of the Lord's great kingdom. We are told that he, he crowns his children with loving kindness and tender mercy. Loving kindness corresponds to what the New Testament calls grace. Thank God there is grace for the journey. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says about tender mercies carries the ideal of compassion and tender love. His grace is matchless and marvelous, folks, but his tender mercies are glorious beyond the word of human language. The ability to explain it, we can't explain it, it's just there. <sighs> Woo, thank you, Lord. This brings to mind the tender touch of a mother. The, I, I think of my mother's touch. In her touch that, that communicates love, peace, and safety, compassion, and well-being. You know what? I thank God for his tender touch as I pass through this cruel and difficult world. And you know, the thing is, this is in present tense. Present tense. His mercies are new every day. Uh, Lamentations 3, 20 through 22 and 23 says, Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because his compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. You know what? Whew, hallelujah. There have been times when, when human touches and the words were ineffective in the valleys of life, but even in the midst of those times, I can think of that, I have never been beyond the tender touch of my great father. Just the feel of his hand. As he reached into my heart was more wonderful than I can describe. The sure knowledge that he, with this rod and staff that comforts us, was ever present to lead and feed and guide and gave hope for the journey. If you're saved today, you can say that today. And notice that he doesn't just give mercies. He gives tender mercies. He doesn't just give kindness. He gives Loving kindness. We serve a God who always operates in the excellent. In creation, he operates in the supreme. In victory, he operates in the incomparable. Exodus 51 says he hath triumphed gloriously. In salvation, he operates in the unbeatable. Hebrews 7.25 tells us that he's able to save to the uttermost. And God moves in the realm of the overabundance. He operates in the area of more than enough. We like to say that Jesus is all we need. Is he all you need today? Or we say Jesus is all I want. But if it ever comes to this place in your life where Jesus becomes more than all you need or more than all you want and he becomes all you have and you find that he's more than enough and when he moves in your life, he will never be just enough. He will always be more than enough. Amen. Mm. So, 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 so how can our souls ever forget that he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies? When I think of his grace and his goodness toward us, I can just have to say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name.
Mm. Don't y'all get me happy today. Hallelujah. Huh. My God. When I think about what he's done for me. I done gone off now. Woo. Come on, y'all. Think about what God has done for you. Think about what he's done for you. Think about what he's brought you out of. Think about how he saved your life. Think about how he fill you with the spirit. Think about how he walks with you every day. Keeps you from danger seen and unseen. Keeps you from enemies. It keeps the enemy away. Keeps him at bay. You can say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Verse 5, it says, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Folks, I'm not done. We just done. Get, you know, whoo. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. You know what? He satisfies us. And as a merciful and gracious heavenly father, he gives his saints the good things of life. He does not always give us what we want. But he always gives us what is best and what we need. Let me tell you that he does. You think you may want what you want, but he gives us what we need. Romans 8, 28 tells us, and we know that all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. One thing I know That is that those who rest in him and draw their strength from him, which I'm drawing from him now, will find that they are in constant state of renewal and constant state of spiritual stamina that will never fail. Those who do not abide in him will have a difficult time continually in the race. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will. Those who are drawing their life and satisfaction from the Lord will display a youthful spirituality and allows them to soar above the storms and difficulties of life like the mighty eagle. Let me talk about the eagle here. Let me talk about him here. Almost done. When when, when, when David mentions the renewal of the eagle, he's referring to the shedding process as an eagle's life. Now, I've heard and, 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 and scientists have said this too, but I've heard some preachers teach about this, about eagles, about their age. When they age, when they get older, their beaks and their talons, they start to cover with, and cake with calcium. So, so, so as a result, neither it is sharp and they, as they once were. When this happens, the aged eagle cannot hunt as effectively as he once did. And as he ages, he also loses some of his feathers. And when this happens, it causes his body to whistle, whistle in the air as he dives toward his prey. The destroy, this destroys his ability to hunt in silence, therefore furthering, reducing his effectiveness as a hunter. But when the eagle enters this period of his life, he will descend from soaring into the heights above and find a place in the rock. There he'll pluck out all his feathers and break off his own calcium-encrusted beak. He'll do that against the rocks. He will even scratch his talons against the rocks until they are reduced to nubs. At this point, the eagle is absolutely vulnerable and defenseless. Many eagles die during this process because they cannot feed themselves or escape predators. But during this time, a wonderful thing happens to those who survive. The feathers will begin to grow back. The beak will also grow back. His talons regrow as long, as sharp as ever before. And after a time, the eagle will step out on the rocks. He'll start flapping those great wings and take to the skies once again in victory. Now, it should be noted this. Now, I've heard no actual scientific evidence to support this information, but I haven't seen no dead eagles yet. (laughs) 
See, many of us can identify with the pain of the ego experiences. We go through our own shedding process from time to time. And the ego will go only through it once. The saint will go through it many times. The answer for both lies in what, he, what the ego does. He goes to the rock. Oh, you better get this here. He goes to the rock. There we can recover what we have lost and have our strength renewed once again. See, after an ego has been through the shedding process, he can look directly into the sun and can soar above the storms. The saint of God who has been through the valley and has been restored by the rock can look full to the face of the glory of God and can soar above the troubles and afflictions of life. See, sometimes when the eagles are in their time of shedding, other eagles will fly overhead and drop food for those in the rocks below. Some, you know, scientists tell us that young eagles never drop food for the shedding eagles. But it's always the older eagles that have been there and want to share what they have with those who are hurting. See, there is a message that's, that, 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 that thought for us this morning. There's a message this. But again, there's no scientific proof of this statement. But again, I haven't seen many dead eagles either. And of course, the psalmist David here could be referring to the truth that an eagle retains its vigor and strength throughout the entirety of its life. See, God's promise to the children of Israel was this. He said this, and I want you to keep this. At the end of Deuteronomy, in chapter 33 and verse 25, it says this. He says, your sandals shall be iron and bronze as your days so shall your strength be. See, that's good enough explanation of the Lord's words for our hearts today. When you, you and I think of how he has repeatedly lifted us from those jagged rocks of affliction and pain and restored us to spiritual strength and victory, we can all just say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Come on, say it with me. Any of you which watching this on the internet, say this with me. Say it with me. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And as I end this today, sometimes the soul forgets the great blessings of the Lord. It does, but, but when it does, it's time to get before him to seek his face and get a reminder of the great things he has done for us. Have you been caught up in burdens and problems of life that you've forgotten his benefits of your life? question, have you allowed others and their actions to hurt your heart away and take your heart away from the Lord and his blessings in your life? You know, the enemy likes to do that. He wants to distract us from the real goodness and mercies of God. I wonder how many here, how many in this place and how many may be looking at this sermon today are really in a place where your souls can Bless the Lord or praise God, praise the Lord. Or, or is there a need for us to reach within ourselves and say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. If the Lord and his presence aren't as real to you as they used to be, or they need to be, this is from my heart today. You can get the help and restoration that you need right now from God. If his presence right now is not real in your heart today, you can have that assurance by giving your life to the Lord. 
If you're in this house and you know Jesus Christ today, raise your hand today. Yes, thank you. If you need a rededication to the Lord, I don't, Lord, just get that, put that in my heart today, just right now. If you need a rededication to the Lord, he's waiting. He, if you need a rededication, there's a lot of folks that need a rededication of God. He's waiting. He can, he, can, he can give you that blessed assurance and blessed hope of seeing heaven after this life is over. So why don't we meet Jesus now? Because we don't want to meet him later. I praise God this morning for this message. Because I want everyone under the sound of my voice, whether you're here or whether you're outside of these four walls on your internet, if you're looking today, I want you to know that God's assurance and his grace and mercy can be yours. And I want you to know today he is available for every single person here. There's people here, maybe people outside of this house who are not assured of his grace and mercy. That's a bad thing. To not be assured that Lord is with you. You look warm. But I want you to make sure that you are saved and know that God's assurance and salvation is within you and know that you 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 know that one of these days we're going to have our hope and glory and see Jesus in heaven. Amen. So I want to pray for everyone here. If you're looking today, you don't have Jesus Christ in your life today. I want you to give the Lord your life today and get his assurance. And church, you're in the house as we pray for those who are outside of this house, outside of this building. I want you to pray with them and agree with everyone. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. We thank you for your shed blood and the sacrifice of your life. Thank you. If I was the only one on earth, you would have died for me and set me free and took away my sins. Now, Lord, I thank you for being long-suffering of me. And now, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. I want to be made new. Make me whole. Give me a new life. Give me a new walk and a new talk. I need you, Father, in my life. Save me. Save my soul. Give me a new way of life, and I will live for you. Now, Lord... I thank you for forgiving me of my sins and my shame. And now, Lord, I am your child. I am your servant. I will live for you. I will read my Bible every day and get your guidance. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Give God a hand praise today. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the message today.